So this is Bandanera. Beautiful, very beautiful place. And now it's gonna be a bit tricky because the anchorage is super deep. So we're gonna have to med more, which is we're gonna have to drop the anchor in 35 meters deep. Then we're gonna have to reverse and tie the stern of the boat to the trees. In the previous episode, we finally arrived in Tural, Indonesia after a five days passage from Thursday Island in Australia. It was long, it was grueling, but the reward is going to be amazing. We can already feel it. There's something different in the air. We raised the yellow flag, called Q flag, to signify that our ship has arrived into a new port, that there are no diseases on board, and we are ready for official inspection. Lucky for us, within 15 minutes of arrival, the officials were already on board to start the clearance process. Each country has its own, and Indonesia is pretty standard. The first person who comes on board will check the crew passports and the clearance paper from the last visited country. They also need to see the boat registration certificate and the crew list. We also need to fill in a questionnaire asking for example if anyone has died during the crossing or if we happen to have found a stowaway after departure. Then another person comes on board to check the medicine box, fridge and freezer and ensure there are no pets on board. Finally another official comes to take photos of any engine serial numbers. Not exactly sure why they need to do that one though. Once all of that is done, that's it. We are cleared into the country and free to go. Or almost. We still need to fill a bunch of paperwork to get a cruising permit for the boat, which we will have to do in their office. We are finally cleared in in Indonesia. Now we can start enjoying. I mean, I say that, but first thing is we're gonna have to do a bit of a check on the boat to see if nothing is broken, or should I say to find out what's broken. But yeah, apart from that, my injuries are healing. I mean, they're healing. It's not infected at least, so you know, it's good. Today we're just gonna go into the city of Trual. It's not really a super big city. And yeah, we're just gonna go to the market and just hang around, see what there is to see. I don't think we're gonna stay in Trual for too long because there's not much to do, but we just wanted to stop the boat for a little bit and get a bit of rest, so probably a few days. Because our next destination is going to be most likely Bendanera, and that's another over night sale so we're not really looking forward to doing an overnight just need to feel fully rested before we start moving again now the interesting part about Trial it is a port of entry that doesn't mean they are used to booties getting the dinghy to shore is interesting to say the least there are no docks no beach so we are tying up to the back of the costume boat and from there jumping onto this big rolling ball to get to the pier. Seriously? Careful it doesn't roll. <laughs> no. I'll spare you the how, but yes, I eventually made it across. Although we had quite a few things to do, it's difficult for us to stop there and not interact with the locals, especially the kids. And as soon as they knew we were French, they started talking football, so impossible for you not to play with them. After that, we stopped for a well-deserved lunch in a local restaurant guarded by this beautiful bird. So, first Indonesian food? Good. On our list was this place to get SIM cards and the supermarket. But on our way, we stumbled upon a beautiful park which called for a bit of a break. I'm not sure what it is though. I don't know, but it's beautiful. Your boat in the background. Seven nights,
today is the city of Turin. <laughs> hey! Are we ready? Almost. What's the next stop? So we're going to an island uh, in between Tual and Bendanera. I think the name is Pulau Walir. So I'm not sure if the pronunciation is that. It's probably not that. But... Oh, your Indonesian is perfect. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we have 35 nautical miles to do today. It's not a lot. So we should be there early afternoon. And apparently it's beautiful. Um, the only issue is the anchorage. So to get there, we have a small passage to go through. And it's quite deep. So um, yeah, but I guess it's Indonesia. So everything is going to be deep. So yeah, let's go there. It should be a nice sail because there's a little bit of wind. Let's turn on the engines. We can grab the anchor and let's go. snorkeling in Indonesia. I'm gonna have a look next to the boat to see what it's like. It looks like it's very sandy so I'm not sure we're gonna see much but you never know we might be surprised and it might be beautiful in there. Yeah we're gonna jump in the tender and have a look. Let's go. Unfortunately I'm not going because uh, my hand is still recovering. I'm gonna wait another few days before I put it in the salty water. We're well, still going on the dinghy and so why I'm wearing a hat, I'm wearing sleeves everything because the sun is gonna kill me hopefully it's interesting enough and i don't get too bored on the dinghy thank god i wore full-on sun protection because it is burning it's funny because the temperature isn't necessarily that high it's around 32 degrees celsius but the sun is really burning not to mention the humidity that makes it feel 10 degrees hotter at least unfortunately there wasn't anything interesting to see in the water first it was very green not that deep to make the free diving interesting Interesting and just not much to see at all. This local boat came in and while we thought there would be fishing, not at all. A bunch of boys went on the island and after a few hours came out with bags of fruits or coconuts or something like that. This man started collecting something on the bank that dries out at low tide. Once everybody was done, they packed up and left, but not without saying goodbye, sending hearts and kisses. No language barrier here. Is it? No, nope, not at all. The water is very green and there isn't much in the water. Yeah, there was a few calls now and there, but only small fish and the visibility was not great. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was not the right spot. Maybe here it's just a beautiful beach, coconuts and palm trees and that's all. At least we tried um, and yeah, we can just enjoy the, the rest of the day now. Since, as we said, the beach is indeed beautiful, we decided to go there for a sundowner. It was a nice way to enjoy this beautiful sunset. So much so that when we decided to leave, we realized the tide was so low, we can't even put the engine in the water without touching. So we are coming back from the beach, and I feel like I'm in Venice. I'm gonna sing. <laughs> na, 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 na. How much are you paying me for that? <laughs> Nothing. It's not good enough. They pay a lot of money in Venice for that. I'm gonna be rich. Yeah, sure. Yeah, like I can sing too. But they, they do resell. And they push, they don't paddle, they push. Yeah, I don't see you pushing. Ah, oh, yeah? And what's that? That's not pushing? Push. <laughs> As nice as it was, this was just a stopover. Next day, it's time to leave in direction of Bendanera. And because it's still windy season, we can sail there.
Bandanera. Beautiful, very beautiful place. And now it's gonna be a bit tricky because the anchorage is super deep. So we're gonna have to med more, which is we're gonna have to drop the anchor in 35 meters deep. And we're gonna have to reverse and tie the stern of the boat to the trees. So that's gonna be something a bit challenging to say the least. There is a little bit of wind, so I'm hoping when we get closer to the anchorage, the wind is gonna drop a little bit and we can have a perfect condition to reverse back to the trees. But that's in my dream maybe, I don't know. We are supposed to get in there. It looks tight. Mediterranean mooring or mud mooring is a technique used for mooring a vessel to appear at a perpendicular angle. The first step is to drop the anchor, which will keep the boat away from the pier, then attach the stern lines ashore. Really no easy task in our case, first because it was the first time doing it, but mostly because the space between the vessels and the small canoes and other mooring lines is very small. We ended up getting a mooring buoy under the boat, so I had to get in the water to free it. So the water is really nice, temperature-wise, but it's full of plastic. Plastic everywhere. I saw one fish. 20 pieces of plastic. I see a big fish. <laughs> I'm not a fish, I'm a mermaid. Free the morning boy. Yeah. The water is nice. And voila! We are tied to the pier, ready to enjoy Bendanera for the next week at least. Look where we are tied up to. Cannon. Cannon? Cannon. What's the plan for tonight? Just gonna go get a few drinks, figure out what we do tomorrow, and then go to bed. I think drinks sounds like a good plan. Drinks is always a good plan. This is it for us this week. Join us next time as we start to explore Bendanera above and underwater. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure to give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.